morning, people of God. Praise Jesus. My name is Linda Nabuki. And my name is Regina Ngunamuel. We welcome you to our IFC Church service here today. Join us.
mkuu ambao Bwana Yesu ametuandalia na ingependa kumshukuru Mungu sana kwa sababu ya siku kwa sababu hakuna mambo mema kuhusu maisha yetu amen eh watazamaji wangu popote unapotazama ikipindi ni kwa neema hapa tuko buruburu ili pota yetu na ni mahali bisho kwetu kwa hana huduma na ningependa kumshukuru Mungu sana kwa sababu ya kuonewa kimbali kuwa katika madhibao ni haya sina mambo mengi lakini mtazamaji wangu na kitu ningependa ni kwari mapema ya kwamba siku ya leo ni siku yako na ni siku utaenda kubarikiwa ni siku utaenda kunyolewa na Bwana ningependa tu ukaweze kuketi tu mahali huko ili kusikia maana leo ni siku yako nataka tu nikaweze kumwandika mke wake bisho awa ma maana yuko katikati yetu ipoza afate kutuletea bisho na kutoka pale tutakuwa tukichana unga tunaposonga na mbele karibu sana awa ma kutuletee awa milati bisho kwa sababu ya neno na tatua tukibarikiwa ninge wasi wapendwa tupigie Yesu makofi ya Buruburu, where we normally minister and we are glad to come to you live today this Sunday my message today is very straight and is a message that meets the need of this hour I'll be speaking about trusting God in a storm and basically you know that we've suffered a lot of we suffer many storms in our lives things that are beyond our control, circumstances that are difficult, we normally go through them in many ways. So the message that I'm going to speak about today is trusting God in our storm. That is in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 31 to 41. At this particular time, we note that Jesus has been teaching uh, the whole day. He had been ministering to big crowds and congregations. Then he came to his disciples and he told them he would like to meet them on the sides and he spoke to them. We read in the book of um, Mark 4 3 that it, and with many such parables he spoke the word unto them as they were able to hear. In 34 it says, but without a parable he spoke not unto them and where they were alone. He expounded all things to the disciples. Now after speaking in the crowds, many messages that he made to them, he had an opportunity to get the disciples aside and tell them the many things that he meant and expounded the message. 
He gave them spiritual insights and spiritual depth of what he meant in his message. In verse 38, we read, uh, we note one thing that here, 30, I mean 35. At the same day, when the, when the, when the event was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And verse 6 says, 36, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was to the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Now the most interesting about this message is that uh, Jesus had spent all the day in preaching. And he told his disciples that let's go the other side of the, of the shore. So they got into the boat. They were all excited about it. They were within the will of God. They knew that they were under the master's control and master's discipline. So we note here that the disciples followed every instructions that Jesus gave them. He told them to get to their boat and they did so. This shows that they were within the will of God and perfectly obeyed the instruction that, God, that Jesus had given. Jesus joined them later and they all boarded the boat and they were now on the sea. But why did they were in the sea? That's where the problems began. Please note that they were within the perfect will of God. They are with the master, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were within the will of God and did whatever Christ wanted them to do. But they encountered a problem within the mid sea. The tempest was so high, the wind was blowing, and the ship, ship was showing some signs of sinking. In verse 37, it says, and there arose a great storm of wind. I want you to listen to that. And the waves beat little the ship, and it was now full. I want you to understand one of the things that is very critical to our lives. That within the sea, they were not able to see how they're going to save themselves. Things were getting out of hand here. It was a difficult situation. I wouldn't wish anybody to get in that kind of situation. The ship was getting full of water. The tempest was high. The wind was blowing. The waves were strong. And they did not see any sign of livelihood. It had threatened the very livelihood of their lives. And they knew that things were out of control. But remember, these were professional fishermen. These were people who were used to doing business in the sea. For them to be threatened, things were out of control. It means that things were bad. When you see a professional fisherman getting trouble, then you know that things are out of the way. They knew how to deal with the hurdles of such, such nature. They knew how to handle troubles of that nature in the sea. But at this particular time, they were threatened. When you see a professional fisherman getting threatened, then things are bad here. It is a major problem. And we note that as they were in this particular situation, they didn't know what to do. They were caught up in a storm and they did not know what to do next. Things were getting out of hand and they were seriously troubled. It does happen to many of us many times when we encounter situations that are difficult, situations that we cannot come out of, situations that are beyond our control, situations that are threatening our own livelihood. The boat was filling with water. The wind was strong. The situation was unbearable. The disciples were in a situation of panic and they were overwhelmed with the situation. A storm was still beating very high and they didn't know what to do next. They began crying and making noise. Remember, <clears throat> they, they had been with Jesus all along. They saw the blind sea. They saw miracles that were being performed. They saw Christ feeding thousands. But at this particular time, they forgot all about that. And they were now seeing their only livelihood, which was troubled. Many times as Christians, when we encounter situations that are beyond our control, we forget the very livelihood. We forget the very word that we've been preaching. 
we forget that the word of God speaks to our lives and we forget that Jesus Christ can deliver us that is what we get into many times right now we are facing the epidemic which has ravaged the world that has caused panic to everybody and even Christians today some of them are even worried Jesus was right in the boat there with them he was actually resting in the cabin and they were worried yet they were with the master the creator of the world the creator of the heavens so let me come to the point here that sometimes storms are designed to increase our faith troubles come to our way they help grow in our spiritual lives some situations are meant to build our stability and our knowledge of the word sometimes this experience is good for us because it brings us to the level of knowing who God is storms are unpleasant storms are not encouraging storms are bad they're uncomfortable they can threaten our own lives it is a crisis to get into a storm but I want to tell you today but we can deal with the storms once we know whom we are dealing with so they found themselves in conditions that were unbearable everything was out of control but they were in the will of God because they followed the instructions of Christ when he told them can you get to the boat and go to the other side of the sea note this important fact here they were within the will of God they were obeying and following the instruction of Christ yet they were within a problem which was the, which was facing them so what could they do so circumstantial problems can encounter our lives and they can be terrible they can cause us discomfort they can cause us feel that we are not in a position to deal with it so these circumstances are issues that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis a crisis that you cannot deal with a crisis that you cannot solve they can make you feel that nobody cares about you they can cause you to despair number two there was a storm first issue that I talked about was the circumstantial issue now we're talking about the storm now under the storm here they were terrified I don't know how many of you have gotten into a terrible situation where you're terrified by the situation things are just hard for you you've lost your job you are sick your family is breaking down you are terrified by whatever is happening around you these are normal conditions that many of us go through so they were in this terrible situation here whereby they didn't know what to deal with we know they were terrified because in verse in verse 40 it says and he said unto them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no faith Jesus asked them why are you so scared why are you terrified why don't you have faith among you but he saw in their eyes and their body language that these guys were terrified so sometimes we get terrified we get subjected to conditions that are difficult for us at this point we note that they did not know what to do they were panicking shouting knowing that their lives were on the line you might be having a storm in your life it could be an emotional storm where your emotions have run high you don't know what to do you don't know who to turn to you can't turn to your friend you can't turn to your parents because this church is unbearable now emotional problems come to our lives many times and we find it very difficult to deal with it you could be scared of your financial status that's an emotional issue you could be scared about your relationship that's an emotional matter too you could be scared about what is going to happen to you tomorrow you could be scared about your children those are emotional scares and threats that can threaten your life but listen to me if you get in this situation you cannot control what will you do next something is against you the trouble is on your back now the third thing that you need to understand is that in that spiritual circumstance when they didn't know what to do next they decided to go back to the Mecca they went back to the Christ and woke him up and they told him a very strange statement don't you care that you are perishing in verse 38 says 
and he was in the here the behind part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and said unto him master carest thou not that we perish why don't you care that we are perishing many times we say that that does the lord know that i'm suffering does he know that i have no, I have no job does he know that i'm sick today does he know that my wife is running away does he know that things are not working around me now that is the condition that many of us are in today that at that particular time when you're in trouble you don't know whether god is concerned about you but let me tell you today god cares hallelujah he cares for our lives it doesn't matter what condition you are in he is available he knows your condition he wants to take care of you he wants to deliver you so when they shouted unto him christ woke up the bible says that he shouted unto them and told them don't you have faith that is the point that i want to talk to you today that when christ woke up he told and say stay calm he actually spoke to the condition he spoke to the circumstance he spoke to the storm and all of a sudden there was serenity and peace in the sea and the despised post stand around and said what manner of man is this one that even the storm obeys him i want to tell you my brother today what man of man is he that even when we are in calamities he can calm the calamity what man of man is he that even when we are sick he can heal our bodies it is for you to remember today that you are in that boat not alone in that circumstance you are not alone jesus is with you he is actually available he's around he calmed the situation what are you going through today it could be a financial situation call upon the lord jesus christ let him speak to your situation let him speak to your circumstance let him speak to your problem because you're what he needs to speak to don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow is it a job that you are looking for let god speak to your circumstance is it a relationship that is on the verge of collapse let christ speak to your circumstance is it a need that you have in your life let him speak to your circumstance in this situation that you are facing as a nation and globally i know many of us are worried but let christ speak to our circumstance let him speak to our day to our issue it's time for it now to arise and be able to recognize that in the boat that you are in though you are troubled by the waters though you are troubled by the waves jesus is there wake him up let him speak to your situation let him deal with the storm around you and he shall come when god brings peace unto you the bible says he shall give you peace that surpasses human understanding we need the peace of god at this hour of our lives our nation needs the peace of god our government needs the peace of god churches across the world need the peace of god countries need the peace of god because at this particular time everybody is worried we are threatened we are under threat the storm of coronavirus is hitting us so hard you don't know what's going to happen next minute you don't know what's going to happen to your neighbor you don't know what's going to happen to our economy things are going down we are told to stay at home we are told not to move around the economy is dwindling what is next let's cry unto the lord like the disciples they woke him up and they said what man of man is this one i'm glad to speak to you today that jesus is alive this power is indeed true in all circumstances and condition he is willing and ready to deal with our life so if you wherever you are i don't know the situation you are going through today but i believe that god can speak to your situation he can speak to your sickness he can speak to your financial situation he can speak to your marriage issue he can speak to you in your condition and peace and serenity shall be seen we thank god because he speaks and he's alive today jesus is the same yesterday today and forevermore i want to say that god bless you may he speak to you may he bless you wherever you are and i wish you all the best wherever you are i want us to pray together at this particular hour and as i pray to you as i pray please mention your condition mention your circumstance mention the storm you're going through 
and let God speak to you as condition. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Wherever you are in your living room, if you are driving in a car, or wherever you are, please stand still, listen, bow your head, and let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that because we can deal with a storm, we can handle storms through you. As we trust in you, all the storms of our lives, the financial storms, the circumstantial storms, our relationship storms, our family storm, all kinds of storms that are coming around us, economic storms, they shall all come down because you shall speak to them the way you calm down the waves and the storm in the sea and it was serenity and peace. The disciples turn around and say, what man of man is this one? That even the storm can hear him. The storm can respond to him. We thank you, Lord, that you can calm us. Even in our stormy lives, you can calm us. Give us the peace that we need. May you touch and speak to that individual that is suffering there. That sister that is in trouble. That brother that doesn't know where he'll get food the next minute. Lord, help him and bless him. I pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you. And looking forward to seeing you again. Bye bye. Father Yesu asifiwe azamaji wangu katika kipindi cha kwa neema hiyo ndio neno jioni ya leo ambayo umenipata tia maanani na usaidika uko pale kwa nyumba na unasema kwamba mchungaji kabla hujafunga hiki kipindi ningependa tu niombe pokovu ningependa tu kufuata maanani ya maana sema bwana Yesu naja mbele zako mimi ni mwenye dhambi futa jina langu kwenye kitabu cha mauti andika jina langu kwenye kitabu cha uzima wa milele kuanzia leo nimekataa shetani na kazi zake zote tazamaji wangu umekuwa na maneno umeogoka kanisa sikufunguliwa na kusii sana utatafuta kazi za zuri ambayo iko na ukweli kwa neno na utasaidika wakati na kama utuko ni wakati wa kutanzama familia wasa youtube na kupita kwa ile pia utaendelea na kukua katika kiroho sisi na kwa kwa Yesu akubariki uko pale wewe ni mgonjwa uko pale kuna matatizo ningependa nitamke neno tena juu ya maisha yako na nikoelea kwamba maisha yako haitakuwa vile tena baba wa mbinguni mwenye uwezo wote kwa jina la Yesu nitakuinua na kunibariki jina lako takatifu naombea mtazamaji wangu wa kana kama huu na mkabidhi mikono limako bwana wa uzima naomba Jehova ukamkumbuke na ukamtende walie ni wangonjo na kimea nguvu za mbinguni na maugonjwa katika jina la Yesu mwana wa Mungu aliye hai walie na matatizo ya jamii naomba mwana wa ndeuni ukaingilie ukatitukuze na ukaonekane maana Yesu mwana wa ndeuni unaweza mambo yote sina kujia kuamilia wale ambao Mungu uzima wana kazi wakati kama huwa inchanga Mungu uzima na wala Yesu ukawakumbuke na ukawajalie na kuwatenda maana unaweza yale mwanadamu awezi katika jina la Yesu walie na maradhi ya corona ninaomba Mungu uzima ukawanguze Yesu ni pole ya maugonjwa yote na unaweza kwa mapigo yako neno lako ni wazi ya kwamba tumepona ninakemea maloo ya maugonjwa haya corona katika jina la Yesu ya kaachili mtazamaji wangu na uponyaji wa dharura I do speak upon him katika jina la Yesu mwana wa Mungu aliye hai baba winuliwe baba wangudiwe maana unaweza mambo yote sifa zako utukufu na heshima kwa Yesu Kristo aliye ni bwana pia ni mwokozi tunakomba na kuamini tazamaji wangu bwana apate kubariki huyo ndiye bisho wetu katika huduma hiyo bado umefika international fellowship of christ na mke wake mmemona ni wazazi ambao wako na maono makubwa katika kazi ya nchini kwa hiyo bwana aweze kuwabariki aweze kuinua na na aweze kuwadumisha asanteni asanteni bye bye shalom